Hey everybody, I'm Aslan Hajavandi, joined by Michael Langston, recruiting analyst for Warchant.com, the ultimate Seminole sports source. Promo code, bottom of your screen to join our website. What we're telling you now, old news. If you're a subscriber over on the premium recruiting board, hit that subscribe button as well of our YouTube page. Set your notifications for however frequently or infrequently you want to be notified when we drop these videos. Michael, what else? Hit the like button for us, guys. Hit, hit, it, hit it hard and... Uh... Keep it so we can promote all these uh, great features for you guys. And uh, you can just uh, keep promoting uh, both good news, bad news, and just big news overall. It's always good news, Michael, especially when you're here, man. So <laughs> we thought, and when I say we, me, the naive people, that it was all over. 2021 class, welcome. Let's go get them, boys. They added a piece, and it was a name that many people that are familiar with recruiting were well aware of, he said he was going to go to Purdue, had a change of heart. Marcus Cushney, he's a null. Yeah, Marcus Cushney, uh, Alabama A&M uh, transfer, uh, originally from Palm Beach, uh, West Palm Beach, out of Palm Beach Central, which is the same school as uh, Akeem Dent and also Brian Robinson. So uh, certainly a guy that they were pretty familiar with. I think uh, Ron Dugan's had a pretty relationship with him. So I think they knew this kid well. They brought him in uh, during some of the official visits at one time to work out, <clears throat> got an FSU offer. They weren't pushing as hard then. They weren't saying, oh, we definitely want you. They wanted to kind of take their time, and then they realized when there was a spot open that they were free, that they had a spot to fill. Um, he had already committed to Purdue, but they made a push, and and uh, I think Marcus always wanted to go to FSU. I think that was his first choice, so – once FSU was all on board and there was a green light, I think it was, uh, I think that that's where all this came in where, you know, he flipped from uh, Purdue to FSU. But I think FSU was always the first priority and certainly a big addition to uh, pass rush because we've seen that, that that's what their focus on is really nailing down the pass rush. And certainly uh, Marcus fits that capabilities. I'm very strong pass rusher, can really get after the quarterback. It's going to add a lot to their their pass rushing to go along with guys like Jermaine Johnson, Kier Thomas, and these other transfers they've gotten. I think this guy's going to certainly help with their pass rush. Uh, so, I mean, you mentioned it there, Michael. Like He, he did want to come to Florida State. He's a Florida native. He was playing out in Huntsville, Alabama at Alabama A&M. And, you know, things work out to where maybe they have a priority that's a little bit higher on the board, so they kind of cool off. I mean, what was this? Were they still in contact, do we think? Or is this kind of like a whirlwind thing that happened here like in the last 48 hours or so? No, I think they stayed in pretty solid contact. I had a couple of contacts tell me, hey, I wouldn't lock it in that, you know, Marcus Cushing is going to Purdue. I think FSU was staying in consistent contact. I think they stayed on him. And then once there was a the green light, I think it was kind of self-explanatory that he, the FSU was going to get this one. And I think it was just about how he wanted to I guess, break the news or whatnot. But I think FSU definitely, uh, you know, stayed in contact and they, and they never, you know, relented, uh, you know, that interest as far as in Marcus. I think it was just the only change was, hey, we realized we have a spot. We have the green light to go and, uh, you know, let's get it done. You know, uh, if you want to be here, we want you. Uh, so I think you realized that they had a spot. And I think even through the early process, when I talked to Marcus before Purdue offered, before FSU offered, he always told me, like, you know, look, um, I'm just taking this stuff as I get it. And also, it was pretty clear that FSU is where he's going to go, where he wanted to be. I think he's going to play the Fox position at FSU from what Marcus has told me. And then, two, um, the other thing was just DMing with him, I could tell, like, it sounded like, hey, if FSU takes me, you know, that's where I want to go uh, based on our conversation. So I think it was uh, – I think once there was a green light from FSU, like I said, I think it was uh, a done deal for FSU. All right, Michael. So do we know what his eligibility is in terms of years allowed? And, I mean, I saw Norvell's tweet. I'll pop it up here on the screen after we kind of glance at his grades here for a little bit. But he, he did say the cushioning was part of the class of 2021. So I know there was that whole July 1st sort of deadline for transfers to be eligible. So are we expecting him to be ready to go for the 2021 season? And how much tread does he have left on the tires, at least in terms of eligibility? I think he has three years because uh, one of the years didn't count. Uh, so I think he will have, uh, I, I'm not going to 
don't lock me in this, guys. I think uh, possibly three years, two or three years. Uh, but I think three years is, is where I go. But I think he, yes, I think he's going to be available to come right in and and play. I think there's a two week window where you can get in there before the semester starts. So I think he he's okay with that that category. But um, I will have to double check on those numbers. But um, I think one of the years didn't count. So I think uh, 2020 was really his his only year. So I think he would have three years, if I'm not mistaken, uh, left. So. Definitely, he can add a lot to that that uh, that group and that pass rush. Yeah, eighteen was his freshman season, so eighteen, nineteen, and twenty was a red shirt for everybody. So, yeah, uh, he would at least have you would think three left. Yeah. All right. Well, let's look at these grades then, and you know, for all the man, the heap that we've uh, the praise rather that we've been heaping on Jermaine Johnson. Um, it's the SEC, obviously, a little bit different competition than the SWAC. I mean, this you want to talk about pass rusher uh, in terms of production. This kid fits the bill, and, I mean, Florida State needs more help on the defensive line. Uh, it's it's obvious. I mean, Kier Thomas brings you a different dynamic on the defensive line, but in terms of pass rushers, you're hoping that Derek McClendon can develop. Uh, you're hoping Quayshawn Fuller can develop. You're hoping Joshua Farmer maybe can be some sort of wild card or a Byron Turner. But this this is a proven piece. So th this is definitely, no matter how the, the courtship worked, uh, this ultimately worked out for Florida State and met a position in need. And he knows how to get after the pass rusher. That's really what they lack on this uh, defensive line. Obviously, we know Jermaine Johnson can do that. There's a few guys, young guys that they're excited about. But this is a proven guy. I don't care if it's an Alabama a and or wherever. Uh, he knows how to get after a pass rusher. South Florida kid, originally from South Florida, like I said. But uh, the main thing is he knows how to get after the quarterback. He knows angles. He knows he knows the ways to get after a quarterback. He's he's. He's now up to 6'2", uh, 245 pounds, uh, so very good size. That can it certainly add a lot to uh, a guy that can get after the passer. It's that simple, guys. I mean, that's what they needed. If they were going to take a you know, grad transfer or a transfer in general uh, at the defensive end position, this is exactly what you're looking for, a guy that his specialty is really uh, getting after the quarterback. Yeah. All right, so um, this – I assume this is it, right, Michael? Like 2021, <laughs> doors closed. Still Last got a week. Oh. Still got a week, Aslan. Uh, got one yeah. more week. So uh, as long as they haven't uh, started the semester, uh, technically there's still a chance for him, them to get somebody else. So I'm not going to close the door on any of this until I'm totally, completely told that, yeah, there's nothing else. But um, very good uh, addition uh, to a position that they – have really focused hard on it at the pass rush and defensive end spot. Uh, so certainly uh, very encouraging, exciting news uh, for FSU. Uh, I think uh, the staff is uh, extremely excited about this one. And as last thing, Michael, you, you know, I know you've, you've DM'd him, so I mean, you haven't spoke on the phone, but just what are your impressions of him as just a, as a kid, I guess his desire, his, his focus, and ultimately, you know, what sort of player you think he can be for Florida State? Well, I think he's very locked in. I think the fact that he came over to FSU during the official visit weekend told you about how hard he wants to be here, uh, how much he wants to be here. The fact that he wanted to, I think he's just ready to work, ready to you know, come into a place that can really uh, highlight his skills. Uh, when you add in all the other defensive linemen and defensive ends that they have, you know, uh, I think Marcus uh, feels like this is a perfect situation. It's in state. So uh, I think I think his mindset is uh, he's ready to work, and uh, I think that was that was very much discussed with the meetings he had with uh, Coach Norvell and Coach uh, JP. I think that was they wanted to make sure we got the right kid because that's what it's about. Everyone's like, "Oh, we just want talent." No, the kid has to be the right mindset, and I think he has that mindset that Norvell wants from transfers that come in that we expect you to make an impact, and that's why we're bringing you in. and And so uh, be ready. You know, this is what we want. Marcus Cushney, 6'2", 245 pound edge rusher out of Alabama AM, virtue by via rather, uh, Palm Beach County, joins Florida State. He was the defensive MVP of the SWAC championship game that his team won. Michael, thanks for all the information. I'm sure there's plenty more over at the PRB. We'll be sure, uh, be sure to check it out, man. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, and I uh, should be getting up with Marcus in a few minutes, actually. Uh, he's told me uh, he's working on a paper. Okay. So uh, uh, he's going to get up with me a little bit later today. We'll 
we'll add that to our story or we'll do a Q and a with them, uh, you know, for a story and, and get that knocked out, but more stuff coming on, on this big pickup for FSU.